Don, what do you think? Mm, 1.8. One, <laughs> he does Boo. not. He doesn't like this beer. Wow. Get the sound effects in. Definitely not his style. <laughs> Boing. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And this week, we have possibly the most award-winning beer that we've ever done. Whoa. Whoa. I have. I mean, is, has there ever been a beer that's won more awards than Russian River Brewing Company's Pliny the Elder? I don't know. We're going to find out. I, I don't think so. I the list is ridiculous. Yeah, you, I didn't. I didn't delve into it because I wanted to kind of be surprised. So okay, I know it's won a couple things. But. So, I, first off, I want to thank Sheila Bissell for bringing this back. Eric Scheid's nurse, who's been with us for as long as I can remember, uh, mother baby nurse, was out in California on a contract. Now she's up in Milwaukee, maybe Minnesota. Minnesota? Minnesota. I think it's Minnesota. I think you're right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Northern state. Okay. Not California anymore. So she is a traveling nurse. Oh boy, is she? Yeah. Drove back from California and brought us just a just a ton of beers, uh, and most notably four bottles of Pliny the Elder. Yeah, that was a good day. Which, if you know anything about anything in beer. Like this is hard to get. This is this you, you can't just roll down to the local. No, well, not here where we're at. Right, right to the Seven Eleven and pick this up at where we're at. You're right. Even out in California, right? I mean, even. Yeah, I don't know if this is just a brewery or do they distribute? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've never been to this place, so they have some distribution. I used to be able to get it in Colorado. You can't get it in the part of Colorado that I go to. Often, you can't get it there anymore. Mm. But. Uh, there is a little bit of distribution in Colorado. There's a little bit in New York. Mostly all, it's just California, though. It's weird that they would roll it back. You know what I mean? Right. They mm. don't... Uh, yeah. That is a great sound. Oh, boy. Yeah. Now, I've had this. So And you've had this, yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, it's one of those things where if someone has it, mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, do you want to try it? You say yes. Yes. You always just say yes. Even if you're not really an IPA fan, you probably should try it just because of its... Lineage. Lineage. Oh, look at that. Uh, Synergy. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking to a computer from Jim. No. You know what I mean? So I'll do a little bit of mine here, and then we'll, uh, then I'll let you... I can't wait to hear your okay. research here. Yeah, let's so, do it. Two different locations. Uh, Santa Rosa location is 725 4th Street in Santa Rosa, California. Open 11 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week. Why are you... What are you doing? <laughs> That was a good sound. That was a good sound. Wow, I think we'll have to do one of those. What are those called, Dylan, those videos? Like on YouTube where it's all about sounds? ASMR. Yeah, we need to do that with a beer. We do need to do that Opening with a beer. it, pouring it, and drinking it. Didn't I Alicia... think that's a good, that's a daily. Mark it down. Boom. Uh, didn't Alicia Keys do that for like a Super Bowl video? Super Bowl? Uh, I don't think it was Alicia Keys, but I think it was uh, Lisa Bonet's daughter, whatever her name is. You know, who, you know who I'm talking about? I know who you're talking Zoe about. Zoe Kravitz. There we go. Her. Man, that first drink is hoppy. Holy sh- Well, that's what we're doing with West Coast IPAs. Gosh darn. This has got IBUs in it. Oh, man. I think the IBUs are over in the triple mm. digits, potentially? I don't know. Maybe? It's probably, I would guess it's going to be around 80. Mm. So the... Uh, mm, man, that's good. Oh, man. This is your style right here, isn't this it? This is, yeah. It's yeah. not Dolan's. He's, nope. he's kind of making not, that chewy not. face. Nope. No. You're making the old bitter beer face? The uh-huh. Keystone kinda. Light? What was that? Yeesh. Mm, okay. Good. More for me, then. 11 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week at the Santa Rosa location. 11 to midnight? Seven, seven days, days. A week. Okay, that's how you know you're in business. That's right. Because it's all business hours. Man, wow. Could you imagine hanging out there Sunday night at like 11 p.m.? Just, yeah. Okay. All I right. could. Yeah, I could, too. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then the uh, there's one in Windsor, California. Now this is the this is the new location. I'll get into this. Hmm. Um, the actual Russian River Brewing Company, 700 Mitchell Lane, Windsor, California. 
Open Sunday through Thursday, 11 to 10, and then Friday is seven, Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. So almost, almost as uh, as much as the other location. Yeah. So um, this was interesting. I don't know if you got into this at all or not, but Russian River Brewing Company was founded by Corbell Champagne Cellars. I knew it used to be something like that. Yes. Yeah. It was. It was started in 1997 by Corbell Champagne, and then Pliny the Elder was one of the first commercially brewed double or imperial IPAs in the United States. Yep. I did not know that. That's the guy that kind of created that whole thing. I, I, if you said his name, I'd know it. But Vinny. Vinny. Chill Urzo. Chill Urzo. Yeah, Vinny. He's credited with the double. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to steal the thunder. Mm-hmm. Steal away. Triple IPA. Yeah. He's the first one to do a triple IPA. That would be plenty of the younger. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my, we're going to get there. Don't okay. worry. So uh, Gary Heck of uh, Corbell Champagne, or no, I'm sorry, Gary Heck hired Vinny Chilurzo, Chilurzo, uh, as the brewmaster and sole employee, so 1997, first employee. And then in 2003, Corbell decided to get out of the beer business and transferred all the rights to Russian River Brewing Company name, beer, recipes, everything, to Vinny and his wife, Natalie. Hmm. Right place, right time. I guess. Right? And then, you know, it's always interesting. I just thought of it just now. Hmm. A lot of these stories, it's like, we always find out it's like two guys, one mm-hmm. guy, and they hire another guy, yep. and it's them for like five years. Think of how close that bond would have to be to oh, run yeah. a business with one person. Yes. Especially if you're not married to him or whatever. Like, you'd be connected forever, I would think. Like, holy cow, the amount of yeah. hours and just probably the fights you get into. and oh, well, you got to be f- like brothers, basically. Yeah, brothers, you know, kind of spouse, like any mm-hmm. kind of, yeah, absolutely. Man, I would murder my brother if we were in business together. <laughs> it would, it's probably a good thing he lives in Colorado. It's then. a good thing he lives in Colorado. So um, so shortly after they, they got all of this, they just said, here you go. Here's all the stuff. Uh, they wrote a business plan, business plan, found two managing partners, and convinced 30 friends to invest in their brewery. I bet those people are uh, pretty happy. They yeah, I'm sure they're point. not regretting it. No. Uh, so in April 2004, they opened their doors and as the next chapter chapter of Russian River Brewing Company under their ownership. Hmm. Um, October 11th, 2018, they opened this new uh, Windsor, California location. It was this is astounding, 85,000 square feet. That's huge. That is monstrous. Yeah. Uh, wow, and that's only not even a year, huh? I, I've never even heard of it. So. Yeah, huge. Hmm. Uh, so this beer in particular won the 2004 Great American Beer Festival Bronze, 2005 Great American Beer Festival Gold, 2006 Great American Beer Festival Gold, and 2006 Great American Beer Festival Gold, or World Beer Cup Gold. Okay. So, and then Russian River itself, the, the, the brewery, has been winning awards since 99. Great American Beer Fest, Best Small Brewing Company of the Year. They're not that anymore. Not anymore. Uh, 1999 Great American Beer Fest Small Brewing Company Brewmaster of the Year. Hmm. Uh, 2004 World Beer Cup Large Brew Pub Champion Brewery. So, so from 99... must be like a volume cap, I'm guessing, or barrel yeah. production. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. You all right that there? Was, that Dolan? was crazy weird. Yeah. That was weird. That was Must weird. have been a radio wave. Mm, I don't know. I just made that up. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Audio. Two, 2004 World Beer Cup Large Brew Pub Champion Brewmaster. So he cleaned up. They cleaned so he up must that. be doing all right. Yeah. 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 2005 Malt Advocate Brewer of the Year. Brewery of the Year. I'm sorry. 2006 World Beer Cup Large Brew Cup Large Brew Pub Champion Brewery and Brewmaster again. And then 2008 the Russell Scherzer. <laughs> yep. I know that. You got that one? Uh, awarded to Vinny, to Vinny for innovative innovation in craft brewing. But nothing since then, though, which is interesting. Nothing well, since 2008. Guess what? Hmm. Competition has cranked up. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those, I think a lot of those awards can be traced to the smaller breweries because they have a little, it's easier for them to make something crazy. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. So, because it's just cost wise, unless they're making. You know, like at Cross Train, we always use them, mm-hmm. but they have a way to like make almost like a two gallon batch, basically. Yes. And I'm guessing there's not something like that at Russia. You're like a 200 gallon batch at, at this big old brewery. Oh, right. So I think it's a little easier to innovate when you're a small mm. mom and pop shop than it would be cost wise mm-hmm. for them. Because if the 
they if they did a whole batch of something and it wasn't good, mm-hmm. they're dumping that. That's Dump a it. lot of money. Yeah. So it might be more like in our world here. There's 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 kind of not there isn't an in between. There's as you're starting to grow and if you have some success or whatever, you make the Inc. Magazine list, right? Inc. Magazine okay. does a list or whatever, and and that's all based on growth. And so the more dramatic your growth, the higher you place in the list sure. or whatever. But then once you get like kind of we are right now. You get to that five, six year mark of measurement, not from in business, but measurement from Inc. Magazine. There isn't a whole lot. You know, you're still growing, but you're not growing at that pace. So it, it, you're not well, it'd as be really hard to sustain that, right? Exactly. So then there really isn't anything until you get to like the Fortune list, right? The Fortune 100 or, or whatever, when okay. you're giant, giant. I'm guessing it's very similar to that. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, these guys, if we were closer to them, maybe our opinion of this brewery would be different. Yeah. Because it would be, I, I would say it's probably like what I feel like Toppling Goliath is now. Hmm. Where it was before, a pretty cool place to go. And it yeah. was, I would drive to Iowa just to get their beers. Mm-hmm. And now they have this huge production facility and it, everything they make is always here and always available now. And right. it's like there was demand. Mm-hmm. And I said, we're going to kill it with supply. <laughs> and yeah. it's just everywhere. You can go to the gas station and find it now. Yeah. Oh, or did they? Before yes. you'd have to, you know, drive 50 miles to get their stuff. Yeah. So I wonder if, if, if we could get this on the regular. I mean, this isn't a style you drink. Mm. So would you ever drink it if you could? Uh, okay. So to be fair, Pliny the Elder is not my favorite Russian River beer. Yeah. I'm, their sours are amazing. Their sours are unbelievable. The first one I ever had was Consecration. Yeah. And that's a, it's a darker plum kind of flavored sour. Yeah. Plum is probably not a good way to explain it, but that's, I guess, dark cherry plum. Yeah. That type of thing. I love that beer. I still have probably four of them in my beer fridge. There's, there, you know, well, maybe six of them yeah. total that have just been aging. Yeah, that's, there. that's good to do with those. And they're delicious. They are so good. Mm-hmm. They're one of the first breweries that really used Bretomycin, I think is how you say that. Bretomycin. And like all their beers are bottle conditioned, which is something that is like a Belgian style. It's an old style of how to do it and not many places do it. That's why those ones that you have, I bet you they have a cork. I was going to ask not, that. Not a bottle cap, but yes, a cork. they're that, a cork. Yeah, because like, that's of what... Like a champagne bottle or... Basically, or, yeah. yeah. And that's why a lot of these, especially Belgian style beers, and this IPA is kind of a Belgian style, you could say. It finishes dry, like a champagne almost. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of how the play, the favor, bleh, flavor profile would would end up being. It is, man. It is so your style. That's it. Yeah. It, it is piney. Ooh, boy. Yeah, I want to. I want to chew on it. That's my kind of IPA. I like mm. the label's sweet. The label, like running all along, they've got this little like little print all along it. Respect your elder. Keep cold. Drink fresh. Do not age. Piney the elder. Is a historical figure. Do not make the beer inside this bottle one. Historical. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. they don't don't age this at all. No, drink it fresh. Not a barley wine style. Do not age. Age your cheese, not your pliny. Respect hops. Consume fresh. Man, I they're guess not. they're warning you about that, right? Yeah. Hurry up and drink this thing. If you must sit on eggs, not on pliny. Do not save for a rainy day. Pliny is for savoring, not for saving. Consume pliny fresh or not at all. Wow. <laughs> Man, they're not kidding. Yeah, that's I, legit. There's probably one guy that kept it too long and then complained, and they're like, you know what? Never again. Never again. No. Thirty-seven notices on the la- on the on the <laughs> bottle. This is hurry up and drink this. It runs the perimeter of the label. It's like a warning label. <laughs> like uh-huh. they decide after that thing happens <laughs> yep. to put it on the. Product. Eventually, the bottle will just melt after mm-hmm. it's like ninety days. It'll just be gone. And you can't get it anymore anyway. This bottle will self destruct in yep. three weeks. So today's research. I was thinking, and, and you kind of hit it. It's on the, the label there. Mm-hmm. Historical figure. Pliny is a historical yeah. figure. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I don't know anything about this. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to dig it up. So I did. Cool. Uh, Pliny the Elder. Mm-hmm. Roman dude, right? Old, I assume. Um, birthday was around, I wrote it down, 79 AD. Oh, okay. So pretty old. Mm-hmm. About 2,000 years mm-hmm. old, dude. Uh, he was an author, a lawyer. A naturalist and a philosopher, which yeah. I think you had to be a philosopher when it was that I think long so ago, because yeah. you know those are like original thoughts almost yeah. being documented. No one's thought that before because you're the earliest people around, pretty mm. much. Yeah, he wrote this book called the Naturalis Historia, mm. which is basically the natural history of the world, oh. and 
it was just his observations of like nature. Okay. And he wrote everything down. So he'd draw like pictures of plants and birds and rocks and talk about weather and all that sort of stuff. And that book was basically the model for what we know as an encyclopedia now. Hmm. And Dolan, that it used to be a series of books, mm-hmm. like 26 or 28 books. And they all, you know, started with A and N with Z. And yeah. if you wanted to learn something, you opened the encyclopedia. Right. Uh, and if you were lucky, you had one in your house. We did not. We had one that was from the 70s. Oh, uh, okay. So. We're, now, that didn't stop people from trying to sell them door to door to us. I know. Us. Isn't that a weird thing that that's, used to happen? Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a job that has fallen away. Door to door sales. I wouldn't think that, especially like encyclopedias. Encyclopedias. I would like to see somebody try to sell encyclopedias. God. They're probably still making them. Uh, I you, bet you there's somebody still making encyclopedias. It's probably like Webster or somebody. Could be just mm-hmm. just for the hipster appeal. Let's let's find it. Alexa. Now she's not working. Mm-hmm. Is it somebody unplug Alexa? She doesn't want to tell us. Somebody, yeah. So he, um, yeah, he wrote that book, and that was, I guess, pretty popular. And it kind of shaped shaped books going forward on, and stuff like that. Um, he had a nephew. And guess what his nephew's name was? Pliny the Younger? It sure was. What, for real? It awesome. was. Okay, all okay. right. So he's the one that really tell, tells us about Pliny the Elder, the older version of him. Um, the original Pliny, his name was... Gaius Pinius Secundus, that was his name, mm. and they just said, "You know what? Let's just go with Pliny. That's close." <laughs> There's jokes here, but I'm gonna, out of respect, I'm yep. gonna, I'm gonna I, yeah. I mean, that's where these jokes come forward. from, probably. Yes, yes. Um, so his story is interesting because he died in a weird way. Okay, and uh, it's kind of interesting story. So hemlock was it? Has, is there hemlock? No, but oh. it's um. Pyroclastic Surge. What? Which sounds like a good band name. Pyroclastic. Pyroclastic Surge. So here's what it is. Okay. He had a friend that lived on this island in that area. And after the volcano eruption happened that killed Pompeii. Uh-huh. And then there was another like island town called Herculaneum that also was covered. We had a friend that lived a little bit further down. Okay. And he's like, oh man, I got to go save my buddy. He's going to die. Okay. I got to hurry up. So he gets on his boat and the wind's blowing and he gets him right in there and he's got like a crew with him and maybe his crew was, they didn't want to be his crew. They were slaves back Mm -hmm. then. So they get to the place and they find the guy and uh, they get him on the boat. But then because of the volcano and the weather, Mm -hmm. the winds that blew them in made it that they couldn't go out. The wind was blowing back at them so they couldn't get off the island. Sure. So it lasted like two or three days, and it was just ash and soot and chemicals and rocks falling on them, and uh, he ended up dying. He couldn't rescue the guy. Oh. He died. But then after the stuff subsided, and then the winds changed, and the rest of the people, sound like, made it out of there. So he was like the one that died. The slaves were like, peace out. Yep. Yeah. So they took off, and and they made it. Um, so there's three different versions of his story because that's the one his nephew said. Like he's he was a hero, he died a hero. Sure. Well, then they did some research, and this is even within the last 30 years. Some guy was looking into this. Somebody said, "Well, we know uh, approximately how big he was, his height, his weight, um, what he ate, the times. He probably just had a heart attack. He was probably scared and had a heart attack oh. and died because if it was the chemicals from the volcano." You'd think everybody would be dead. Right. So they did that. Another story was when they got there and they found out they couldn't leave, his slaves rebelled and just killed him and murdered him and left him there. And then they took off. That seems, yeah. But the version his nephew said was that he basically was running into these buildings to pull people out and then was overtaken by the fumes. Well, he was a hero. Right. right. So that's, that's his story. I somehow believe he was probably killed by his slaves. I think that, or I'd mm-hmm. just go with the heart attack. Heart attack? I think if you're in bad enough shape, mm. you get scared, that's it. You're How, done. Did they, they knew what his diet was? Like, he kept track well, of that? They, like, well, I guess they could know historically, like, what was around to uh, eat, you know? It's yeah. like, um, not paleontology, but there's another study of, like, the study of plants material mm-hmm. from that time. They could figure out, like, their diet's pretty good. He and enjoyed, they wrote down everything. He enjoyed a Whataburger. Maybe. I think, <laughs> no, if he, he, maybe he was credited with creating those, but... 
he credited everything, he enjoyed, everything else clearly. So. so he, yeah, so he did that. So that's his name. Now I know why they chose that for this beer and this brewery. That'd be interesting to know. You know why? Like, how did they pick this one? Because he's not like famous, famous. Right. He's famous enough to have like a couple stories about him on the internet. It's a pretty kick-ass name, though. I, I mean, like it. Yeah. Um, and then Pliny the Younger, he was kind of followed in his footsteps. He was an attorney, and a, uh, everybody was an attorney apparently back mm-hmm. then. Dolan could have been an attorney, probably. And uh, well, <laughs> he would have passed the bar, maybe. I, yeah. I would have been a joker. Yeah, come on, he, that's exactly right. He was a court gesture. <laughs> yeah, could have been. Yeah, they don't um, let bass players be I don't, attorneys. Yeah. I don't think. I don't know if they. I don't know. He could have ruined bass for everybody back right then. <laughs> um, oh yeah, so then. His nephew, Pliny the Younger, that's another beer mm-hmm. um, at Russian River, and that's their triple IPA, and that comes out every February. Okay. I think it's like the first Saturday of February every year. Yep. And it's bonkers crazy. Like, people line up for days and just to try it. Like tents on yeah. camping out. It looks like homeless town. Yeah. There's people just camped in line to get in there and get some. What? So this brewery... the. The original one is near Santa Rosa, which is kind of in the area where the wildfires were. Mm-hmm. So, you know how we did that episode, right? With so, resilience from Sierra right. Nevada. Uh-huh. So these guys did something similar, but they, they just fu- started this fundraiser, like mm-hmm. a committee, and, and put a bunch of money into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wrote it down. Sonora Pride, so oh, the okay. Sonora Mountains. Mm-hmm. Um, they pledged a million dollars to help repair and, and stuff. And then they did a thing where you could buy tickets for the Pliny release. Okay. But the ticket, if you gave extra money for the ticket, then you could cut in line. Mm. And they raised 116 grand in one day. Jeez. Just so people could get closer and get the beer. <laughs> so that's how much this beer, I've never had it. I think, well, actually, I think I might've had it one time. Really? Yeah, I think. I'd have to check my untapped. I'm going to go look at your untapped right yeah, now. Yeah, you'll have see. to do that that's for your, me. Because uh, you're talking here. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I have for this brewery. That... There is a following here. So I remember uh, Bob and Patty Hanks. So Bob's one of our recruiters. Patty travels for us as as a nurse. Uh, they were in. I I, I want to say there. Patty was at a hospital in Santa Rosa. I think that's true. There's quite a few though. Quite a few. And they've had in the last few years. They've had a lot of strikes down there. So it's very possible. Going back to my early early days as a client manager at a different company, uh, one of my first contracts ever was uh, was at Santa Rosa, California. And that was when California was a walk-through state. So nurses that are listening to this, California was a walk-through state. You could fly you mean, in. You didn't take six months to get your license? No. You could fly into Sacramento and take a cab to the Board of Nursing, uh-huh. get your, and do your walk-through in like 10 minutes, and then take a cab back and fly back out. And just nice. like that. Like that. You could be in and out in a day. That so was wonder, how quick it used to be. what happened. Uh, money happened and bureaucracy and, bureaucracy and, and yeah. that business. So... So Pliny the okay, so there's Pliny the Elder. Wow, I looked at the untapped rating on this already. Mm. Let's 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 talk about that right now. All right, let's actually. do it. Let's just, How many check-ins are we talking? Two hundred and twenty-four thousand. That's a lot. Might be one of the highest we've ever done. Well, volume-wise, check-ins, yeah. yeah, probably, maybe. I think we had maybe one or two higher. But. Ooh, you've got uh, two friends have checked into this. Let's see. Uh, uh, one of my uh, a recruiter friend that I have down in Texas who doesn't work for us, and you. Interesting. And me. And you've checked it in one, two, three times. Well, there you go. And it's been pretty consistent. So, okay, so what do you think? 224,000 ratings. Where do you think we're at? I would say 4.14. Don't. what do you think? Mm, 1.8. One, <laughs> he, does not, he doesn't like this beer. Wow. Get the sound effects in. Definitely not his style. <laughs> Boing. No, uh, 4.46. Four, four, hmm. Mm. Dolan's actually closer, 4.52. Holy crow. Huge. I mean, it only goes to five. It only goes to five. Yes. So that just goes to show, are people rating it on the name and the just getting it, or are they rating it on the actual flavor? That's true. Because I don't think most people nowadays, this is not what they're looking for. No. People like me are going back to this now, and, and breweries mm-hmm. are starting to brew again some of this. But then there's another on the flip side. Mm-hmm. Um, Wood Green in South Dakota mm-hmm. that Aaron Daly's good friends with. Yes. They have a zero IBU IPA. He told me that. It's I, called the Un-IPA. I don't believe that. There's, there's I think no... So. Really? I think it's possible. I've, that, I've been... My brother-in-law that homebrews, he's been trying to get it for years, and he gets it to... I think he's got one that was about 10 IBUs. I just don't understand how you can 
rem- completely remove the bitterness out of what you're the, the sheer amount of hops that you're putting in to make yeah. an IPA. I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out. He's going to go up there. I think he's going up there this week. I want to see if he can get some of that. I would love that. It. Would be interesting just to research it and see how it's possible. That'd be a fun one to try. So here's my uh, actual research. This is what I thought of today when when we were talking about this episode. We we're talking about West Coast IPAs, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what's West Coast other than this thing? What's that one? Do you remember that one? West you know Coast. That West Coast. Yeah. West yeah. Coast wrap, boys. Yes. We're going. Oh, we're yeah. going down that road. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Here's what I've got. Okay. I've got a list of their real names of the rappers. And oh. you're going to tell me their rap name. Tupac? Mm. All of them. All these names. You okay. ready? Okay, okay. So I'll just kind of pop around, and then uh, you tell me who it is. Okay. These are all... I picked Legends. Okay. And some of these are still current and active and have not been murdered. And these are all um, West Coast guys, yes. These are all alleged to be West Coast guys. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Eminem was on the list, but I thought, well, I mean, he's from Detroit. His rap is more West Coast style, but I left him off the list. Marshall Mathers. I think you would know that one. Yeah. Marshall, um, Marshall. Earl T. Stevens. A E Z. Earl T. Stevens. No. No. Not Easy E. Um, Earl T. Stevens. I'm going to go with Ice Cube. E forty. No, I don't know. Who that no, is. I don't know. You don't know E forty? No. Hmm. All right. I just figured Earl Easy. <laughs> I put E ten gasoline in my car. Does that count? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> All right. uh, I'd tell you to listen to E forty, but I don't know if you're old enough to pretty, listen to it. Yet. Mm, pretty rough. Okay. Yep. Um, artist Leon Ivy Junior. Oh man, Leon Ivy Junior. I've yep. heard this. Artist. Artist. A R T I S Artis. is his first name. Artist. Oh, Artist. Leon is his middle name. Um, Ivy Jr. <laughs> I'm bad with rap music. No idea. Coolio. Coolio. Get out. <laughs> Louis Mario Freeze. F R E E S E. Oh, man. He is B Real. Oh, okay. From Cypress Hill. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh. You know about the Cypress Hill? I know Cypress Hill. Hmm. Lassane Parrish Crooks. Mm. Lassane, <laughs> that's a crazy name. It is, huh? Uh, I don't know. Thug life tattoo across the stomach. That is Tupac. That is Tupac. Lassane, what is Lassane? Lassane Parish Crooks. P C Parish Crooks. So P A for Parish, P A and C for Crooks. Pac P A C Tupac. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Andre Ramel Young. Andre three thousand. Doctor Dre. Gosh darn it. Eric Lynn Wright. That's easy. You're right. You yes. got it. Yes. Gerald Earl Gillum. Now, this guy's new, so I don't know. Him. Oh, I was going to go with Cube, but that's okay. No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> G-Easy? G-Easy. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see here. How about... Oh, here's a good one. Tracy Lauren Morrow. Tracy Lauren Morrow. So it could be, it sounds like two female names beginning. Tracy Lauren Morrow. Mm, no clue. Oh, this one's so good. <laughs> Is this Cube? No. Oh, okay. He's on, uh, he's an actor now. He's an and actor. It's not Ice Cube. Will Smith? No, but no. he's on, uh, <laughs> he's been, uh, <laughs> that'd be funny. Will Smith's real name is, is uh, Tracy. Funny. Um, it's, he, it's he, not iced tea, is it? It is. Iced tea. Ice tea. That's iced tea? See, I only know because of, um, the memes. Uh, uh, no, SVU. the crime show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Law and Order. SVU. Law and yeah. Order. So there's yeah. a couple years ago, he had these memes they were making with him because the stuff he says on there yes. is crazy. Oh, yeah. So it was something like, you mean to tell me there's people grinding up jellyfish bones and snorting them through their butt? <laughs> and that's like the meme. It was the craziest shit you could find. And then that's what they would say he would say on the show. Mm. Uh, O'Shea Jackson. O'Shea Jackson. I have heard of this. Like O-S-H-E-A mm-hmm. Jackson. Yeah. Oh, I've heard of this. That's because it's Ice Cube. That uh, and his son is O'Shea Jackson Jr., yes. who's an actor, who, right? Who played his dad in, in Straight Outta Compton? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, e- Cube didn't. Oh, I never seen the movie yet. Cube's boy played him. Yeah, played yeah. his dad uh, in Straight Outta Compton. He also was in another something else recently that was uh, pretty good, but I can't remember what it's called. I don't called. remember what it was. Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. 
Dwayne Michael Carter. The Rock. <laughs> the Rock. <laughs> Just because of Dwayne. No, it's no. Lil Wayne. Lil, Lil Wayne. Wayne. Uh, Nathaniel Dwayne, another Dwayne. Mm. Hale. Nathaniel Hale? Yep. That's a historical figure. Nathaniel. Nate Dog. Uh, Nate Dog. Good old Nate Dog. Rest in peace, Nate Dog. R.I.P. Yep. Uh, Anthony Terrell Smith. I'm going to go with uh, 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 Warren, G- Warren G. Tone Loke. Go! Man. Oh, I forgot about him. Funky you want to hear a Cole Tone Loke story? Medina. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first rap and only rap cassette I ever had in my life. Cassette. <laughs> yep. Yes. I bought it, got it in 19, would have been like 89. Wow. Oh, man. Earlier than that. And right? now Best Buy no, doesn't sell. It came sells. out in 87. I got it later. Okay. Um, and and now Best Buy doesn't sell CDs. Well, I bought it at Shopco. Yes, yeah, true. I got oh, it at Shopco. Shopco. Oh, okay. Yes. And I didn't buy it. My mom did. And here's why. So I was looking at the, at the shelf, and they had two separate ones. You know how cassettes came in the long plastic? The long, yes. Thing? The, so you don't steal them. So you didn't steal it. So there was one that was like 10.99. Okay. And then there was another one that was 9.99. All right. And I didn't even understand what this meant, but the one that was nine ninety nine, the cover on it was covering up the parental advisory sticker. Oh. So that was a no at my house. I was watching Disney movies. I was not allowed to have this. Sure. Stuff, and sure. I didn't even know what that meant. Okay. I knew what the words were. Mm-hmm. So the nine ninety nine one without the sticker showing was cheaper than the ten ninety nine one. So I give the one to my mom. I say, This is the one I want to buy. And she's like, All right. So we buy it. And we're going down to my, to the farm to visit my grandparents. Oh and I'm boy. sitting in the back of the uh, 88 Bonneville we had. <laughs> and it's got the plastic on the, you know, on uh-huh. the seat, the yes. bench seat in the back that oh, had the yeah. ridges. So if you sat on it a long time, you get those bumps. Mm-hmm. Terrible in the summertime. And that's when this was. Yep. So we're driving. And my mom's driving. And she's driving in the front. And I'm in the back. And she puts the tape in. Oh, no. And it had Wild Thing yes. and Funky Cole Medina. Those yeah. were the two tracks, right? Oh, yeah. So after Wild Thing, I was like, all right, that's the song I knew. Mm-hmm. Then there was some, you know, filler. Sure. Well, there was a lot of words in these songs that <laughs> were not appropriate for me to hear and for my, to be with my mom. And the tape played. She took it out, mm-hmm. put it in the glove box, and we never talked about it ever again. <laughs> That's the only time I ever listened to it. We never said anything. We didn't have a discussion. She just put it in the glove box, and yes. that was where it went. So oh, man. That's my Tone Loke story. <laughs> uh, I got a couple quick ones here for you. All right. Calvin Brodus. We know him. That's Snoop Dogg. Yes. Quincy Matthew. Oh, boy. Haley. Hanley. I can't read my own writing. Schoolboy Q. You know about him? No. Mm-mm. No. He's, um, I think he's been rapping for about 10 years. He does some really kind of weird and cool stuff. Okay. He's more of an alternative rapper. Oh. He was just on Hot Ones a little while ago. Oh. This year he's on this huh. season of that. But he's um, friends with like Flying Lotus and Thundercat, which is like jazz inspired rap. Thundercat stuff. is bass, like the bass player, player, like one Bad of my brains. favorite bass yeah, players. He's amazing. Um, but he's friends with those guys. So Th- if you like that kind of music, then this is the kind of rap he does. Thundercat in my day is Lion O. I don't know oh. what kind of Thundercat you're talking about. <laughs> this guy is into that. He is a comic nerd like no other. Really? He is so cool. And he is he's... weird. He's a trip. <laughs> his hands that's when, amazing yeah and he, really? lo- he always yeah. plays fretless right um well not probably i haven't really looked but i know that where i discovered him he was not playing a fretless mm, okay so he used to I, be in bad brains you know that band oh yeah 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 he okay. was the bass player in that I, ironically i met pat schmier do you know who pat schmier is yeah i met pat schmier one time his it, bass player his hands are the size of like like Wait. like hockey like goalie gloves, like they are so giant. His hand like engulfed my hand and my arm. As he <laughs> shook your hand, and he was grabbing your he's elbow. Like, he's like, "Hey, nice to meet you." And it was huge. Like his hand was giant. Like that Nirvana Patchman. Nirvana Patchman. Nirvana Foo Fighters. He's a guitar guy. Yeah, he's a guitar. I guy. thought he was a bass guy. No. Guitar guy. Holy cow! His the check. Germs. That was the first band he was in. Was that Germs. it? Yeah, they were a punk band. His hands are giant. Uh, two two last quick ones for you, and then I'll get to the next thing. Okay. Todd Anthony Shaw. That's too short. Okay. With a dollar sign. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Tyler Gregory Okan- Okanma. That's not um, uh, 
he's a skater too. Mm. Uh, Tyler, the creator. The creator. Yeah. The creator. Tyler, Tyler the, the creator. creator. He is weird. He um. I love weird. He has the best interviews. Oh. He was in a he was in a group with um another dude named like Earl Sweatshirt <laughs> and a couple other guys. They had like a collective that they first came out with, and they had some songs that were popular, and then they all did solo stuff. But their music was like aggressively violent, oh. like disgustingly violent. Like that's what they were going for. Like body count. Like like, like that worse times a hundred. Wow. Like really? talking about eating people and oh. stuff, like oh. that sort of rap, which is like a thing. That's a subgenre of mm. it used to be in Houston. It was like murder core rap was down there, <laughs> and like horror rap is a, a subgenre. Yeah. And it's along those lines. That's so a he thing. Was crazy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man, it, uh, Dolan, who's the band that uh, that we always listen to that did the mashup with uh, uh, Careless Whisper? What's that? Is that the? You guys listen to Wham too. Wham, wham. Who's that oh, yeah. did the wham? Some wham. Um, wham. Uh, not, uh, oh gosh, darn it. Anyway, I can't think of, uh, like that almost. Like, hmm. And they are hardcore, like, oh, like yes. rock, you know, like like metal. You're not thinking of like Slipknot, are you? No, 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 no. This isn't the Slipknot older. That like, song, they've been be amazing. They've been around forever. Blood Rain is the one song that they do. Oh, Raining Slayer? Slayer. 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 Raining Blood. Raining Blood. Isn't that, isn't yeah. that the got Raining there. Blood? We got Raining there. Look at that. Yeah. So we need Amy in here. Amy Boyd. Do she yourself did. a favor. Go look up the mashup between Slayer and Wham. Between Is is it Careless? No, it's not Careless Whisper. It's the one with the uh, with the solo, with the with the uh, saxophone solo. Yeah, Careless Whisper. Careless yeah. Whisper. Is yeah. that it? Oh, my God. It's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway. So Brian, you brought a you brought a surprise beer. I did. This is called Mountain Standard, and what this used to be, Mountain Standard used to be a black IPA. Okay. From Odell, they made it came out once a year, mm-hmm. and it was in four packs. It was kind of expensive. Okay. Now they switched it up and they changed the recipe. They kept the name because they owned it, and that's okay. important because you know how hard it is to get names. Odell Mountain Standard mm-hmm. seems about right. Yeah. So this is what they're calling a Mountain Style IPA. And that's why I brought it, because it's kind of a new genre of IPAs. Okay. And basically, it's where West Coast and East Coast meet. Oh. So it has some char- characteristics of West Coast, and it has some of the East Coast. And it's its own special thing. And this beer, I love it. I think when you take the first taste, you're just going to be like, what is happening? Sweet. So as much as Pliny the Elder is the granddaddy of mm-hmm. West Coast IPAs... This is set up to be that for, for this, if this style continues. Okay. This is set up to be that. So you'll notice it's... Golden. Golden. It's You can't see through it. No. It's, it's a little They hazy. call it hazy. Yeah. What, what they call hazy, like an IPA in New England style, they mm-hmm. call that cloudy. Okay. So that's okay. their definition. Sure. So I guess cloudy is more than hazy. If you go outside and haze, it's harder to see. But cloudy is darker, right? Okay. That's, that's how they're doing their definitions. I understand. Um, the other thing about this beer, and you can taste it if you want one, blabbing. They don't do any adjuncts. So they don't put anything in it. There's no fruit juice. There's no lactose like you're going to get with New England style. What does that smell? There's a bunch of hops. Wow. It's tr- It's like triple dry hopped, I think. I got to tell you, the first, the first is the smell is kind of off-putting. I don't know. Maybe. I, it's just a little bit. I like this better. Oh well, Dolan likes it better. I'll give it a shot. So, I have a I have a funny mm. story in, in addition to your tone loke story. I got to tell okay. you this. So, hang on, let's try yeah. this one. It's gonna smell hoppy. It's gonna have a little bitterness, but not much. Hmm. I don't know. It, you know what we probably should have done? Okay. Rinsed that pliny glass mm, out. Probably. Hit it from the can. Is there any left? Hmm. So. Gosh, I don't the other thing for this one is it should be refreshing in their finish, not dry like a West Coast style. Hmm. Still no? I, maybe. Yeah. Let me get into it a little bit. All right. Let me get into it a little bit. Well, that's the new style. So that's why I brought it because we got West Coast. Next, we're going to do East Coast, and this is kind of the segue to that stuff. So clearly next week we should do East Coast mm-hmm. with East Coast rappers with Biggie and, mm. and you know, right? We gotta find an East Coast. Beer, <laughs> I mean, I'll have to do some research, but yeah, okay. we can do right. that. East Coast, East Coast, West Coast. So here, here's my. I, before we get too far into the Mountain Standard, my uh, 
So same sort of, same sort of thing. I wanted my my dad ran a theater when I was a kid, about the same age. Um, so it had been 86, 87. So I'd been 10, 12 years old, somewhere in there. And uh, Purple Rain came out. Oh, yeah. And I wanted that tape. Man, I wanted that tape. That was, <laughs> man, that was awesome. So we went to the, uh, we went to the TG&Y. You remember, what's, you know, what's the TG&Y? TG&Y was like, kind of like an Alco Walmart kind of okay. kind of place that Shopco, very similar to Shopco. Pomida? Very, very similar to Pomida. <laughs> yeah. But that was, was like the small town mm-hmm, Target. Small, small town Target. Yep. TG&Y. So we went to the TG&Y, and uh, I, got, I got the tape, and my dad looked at it, and he said, okay, here's the thing. You can have this tape, but you can't listen to the last song on the, on the, last, on the second side. How did he know already? Because he ran the movie. He, ran, oh, he, he okay. knew which song to look for. That song, of course, was... Darling Nikki? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. This, and this was not a parental advisory tape. It was not. No. This was before Pearl Advisor. It, it should have probably was, been. Oh, absolutely. I think every Prince one ever after that was. But yes. Yeah, this was This was maybe, this actually was, the song you're talking about, is one of the ones that got Tipper Gore all angry. Yes. And that's why there's Pearl Advisory today, because of that song. Because of that song. Yeah. So what was the first thing? So I got home, and I started listening to the tape. Yeah. And then my friend Lance Miller called me. And I took the tape. What's the first thing we did when we went to his well, house? We had to listen to Darling Nikki. Hell yes. Yeah. Do you think we understand? At 12 years old, did we understand a word of that song? Well, you might have known some of the phrases. We understood kind of, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> didn't really. Yeah. So uh, the first time I ever heard that song, because I didn't have that tape. Okay. I heard a Foo Fighters cover of that song. Yes. Off the X-Files soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that was where I learned about that song. Oh, really? Yeah. Because oh. yeah. I, I would have only been like five when that came out, five or six. Okay. So that was 84, I think. Man, it was yep. groundbreaking. Yeah, that's a song. But here's the thing. This is this is the thing that I've learned as a parent now is if you're going to tell your kids not to do something, the first thing they're going to do is they're go gonna do, do it. They're going to do it. Right. The other thing is I've, I'm learning already, and I think some of my, my friends that have older kids will tell you this too. Mm-hmm. When you think it's time to tell them about something, they already mm-hmm. know about it. They know about it already. So if, if you've got to tell them of some things, some life hints, mm-hmm. probably better go earlier than you think. That's, I don't know. I had to tell Maddox yesterday, don't shoot your friends in the wiener with the Nerf gun. Don't do it. Yeah, it's funny, but don't, don't do it, it. Man, it might be funny, but yeah. it hurts. And do you want to get shot in the wiener with a Nerf gun? No. no. So there you oh, go. Oh, that makes me think there's a video. Have you seen that video on Facebook? There's oh. a kid. He's, he's got, he's, he has like a Nerf gun. He shoots himself right in his wiener. He's like yeah. five and he just goes, oh. Oh, he does a little dance. dance. Oh yep. my gosh! Yep. And then somebody remixed and put music to it. <laughs> the flash dance song. Yeah, they put the flash dance and he's <laughs> dancing. Oh, that's terrible. I love it. Yep. Oh boy. Yep. Okay, so the further I get into this Mountain Standard to the Mountain IPA, mm-hmm. it's not bad. There's a soap quality to it. Maybe I think that's because we mixed the Pliny. Mm. That's my feeling, just, and also because it got warm. Uh, I went to get it in the. I heard this noise. I had my sound canceling headphones on, but I heard this noise for like the last 10 minutes out there. And it was the refrigerator door alarm. They're cleaning the fridge. Uh, uh, and it was in that fridge. So this oh. wasn't exactly cold when I got it out either. But I, for me, this one, I think it's got a lot of citrusy notes. Mm-hmm. It allegedly, you're supposed to get pineapple, mm-hmm. orange, and mango. That's what it's supposed to be, those hops. I can get that. Yeah. So I don't know. I Ever since I found this, I've had a six pack of it in my fridge. I just drink one every once in a while. Again, your style. This is definitely your style. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely not as hoppy. It tastes hoppy, but it's not bitter. I think mm-hmm. I that's get, why I think I like it. Yeah, like yeah. it a little bit more. So this is a combination of the two styles. Hmm. That's that's what they're marketing it as. So then, clearly, next week we have to do an East Coast IPA. Mm-hmm. We have to do a hazy East Coast IPA. Yeah, one or two. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, plenty of the elder. What? Uh, you you've ranked it four times. Yeah. On on tap. What did what? Are, are, is it going to change at all? Do you remember what you ranked it? I'm sorry. Do I'm sure know? I would have ranked it probably five, a couple of times. I bet. I'd say. Ironically, no. You've always ranked it the exact same thing. Really? Yep. Hmm. I'd say four twenty five today. You you've always been four. You've been a solid four I think over I'll the go, years. I think I'm going to go up a little bit. Today. I can I can see that. I can just see because that. it's something. This is a style that hardly anybody's making anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I think I'll do that. I think I'll four two five today. I've had I've had I've had the pleasure of having this at my favorite pizza. Well, okay, at, at one of my favorite places in in Estes Park, Colorado, at Poppy's Pizza, 
a place that you and I have both mm-hmm. been separately, um, who beer guy through and through. I had plenty for the first time there. Yeah. And that, uh, I think that's where I had it first time too. It goes, it pairs well with pizza. It really does. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. That malty character mm. is good with cheese and bread. Bread so. and cheese. Yeah. So, mm, so. pizza. Interesting. Well, I'm hungry. I, yeah, Me too. I, yeah, I'm too. So, Pliny the Elder, man, we we have rocked through some really, like like legendary beers. Yeah. Just what is this like fifty two or so? I think we're on maybe somewhere in there fifty two, fifty three or whatever. We have gone all over the place, and we've gotten some really. I mean, just to think that we had Heady Topper and Pliny, <laughs> that's amazing. That is amazing. Those are beers we just can't get. Those mm. are the legends. Yeah. Mm. Well. Keep bringing us beers. If you're on the road somewhere, I have no problem whatsoever either giving you cash when you get here or reimbursing you through your check if you work for us and you drop us off some beers. If you go someplace and, and you you enjoy what you drink, yeah, bring it to us and we'll drink it and talk about it. Yeah, don't don't bring us the trash. Bring us that good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we want the one, you, your favorite. We want that one. Mm-hmm. Whatever you like, whatever you found, whatever, you know, if, if you had a good experience at the brewery, Bring it to us. However, we're not opposed to taking five cans of your six pack that you didn't like. That's we, true. We would do that too. Yeah, like if you're like, oh, I, I did, yeah, thought I might like IPAs, mm-hmm. but, uh, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. Then we'll we'll help you out with that. We'll uh, we'll take that bullet for you. <laughs> so next week, East Coast IPA. Mm, East Coast. I wonder what we're gonna have. Insert Biggie Smalls music right here, Dolan. But not too much because we can't get we can't afford the rights. So just like yeah, true. Just maybe like five a, or six like, seconds worth. Big pop, something That's like it. that. That's, That's it. it. That's Cut all it. you get. All right, Brian, we ain't going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. Thank you for listening to a beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of a beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.